Hi, I'm John and in today's video you're going to learn about all the different ways that you can implement pattern matching within a .NET 7 project. While pattern matching isn't exactly new anymore, for anyone like me who started using .NET way back when v1 framework was released, pattern matching was never really a thing. Now this all changed when C Sharp 7 was released back in 2017. Now, since then, each new version of C Sharp has had pattern matching improvements, and .NET 7 is no exception. Personally, whenever I hear the phrase pattern matching, I can't help but to instinctively think I need to be a pro at advanced algorithm concepts, sourcing patterns, as well as having a doctorate in regex syntax. Basically, all the useless stuff you get asked in a job interview, however, as a web developer, you never really need to know in real life. Now, this is where I want to debunk the difficulty about pattern matching. So, as a recording, there are 12 different types of patterns that you can make use of. And 12, granted, it may sound like a lot, however, the majority of these patterns are very similar. In fact, I'm guessing you're probably making some of use of these patterns right now without realizing it. So, by the end of this video, you'll know all the areas in your code base where you can use pattern matching, as well as all the different techniques that you have at your fingertips. So, without further ado, let's look at the Wikipedia definition of what pattern matching entails. Wikipedia defines pattern matching as the act of checking for a given sequence of tokens, the presence of the constituents of some patterns. Now, I feel stupid because I can't even say half the words in that definition. In plain talk, you can use pattern matching when you want to test that some data matches a certain criteria. Now, your first question might be, when should you make use of this technique? Now, the code focus answer to this question is consider using pattern matching whenever you need to use either the is operator or a switch statement. In case you weren't aware, there were actually 12 different pattern matching techniques. So what we're going to do now is run through some code examples of each one in action. Before we get into the thick of it, it's worth pointing out that I've added all the code you're about to see in a repository which you can download and check out in your own time. So to access that repo, go over to my GitHub, which is John D. Jones POC. Go to the repositories tab, and from here you'll see a project which is called pattern matching net7. So go well with that. And while you're here, follow me as well. We are going to start with probably the most important pattern within this list, and that is the smash on the subscribe button and help me out with that pesky YouTube algorithm by clicking on like. Now, if this is the first time that you come across this channel, then my name is John and I do a weekly YouTube video every Sunday that will help you become a better developer and help you build enterprise grade websites. So if that sounds amazing to you, you know what to do, and as a thank you from me to you, I'm going to show you a picture of a pattern. Constant pattern released within C Sharp 7. I'm guessing that you probably use the constant pattern all the time without really thinking about it. Now, in the constant pattern, we're going to match an expression based on a constant value. Now, we've all got constants, you know, true, false, bool, all that kind of good stuff. So here's some examples of the constant pattern in action. So we've got our is here and a zero, which would be constant. So this is one example. We've also got our switch statement where we can see we're passing in zero and we're matching on it. The final example is probably the most used example, and that is checking against null. So in here, we've got example is null. So as I said, you probably use this one all the time. You probably never thought of it as a pattern. However, it's got its own name. Declaration pattern released within C Sharp 7. The declaration pattern will allow you to create an expression that at one time will match on a given type, and if successful, will then assign the result to a declared variable. Now this sounds complex, but in essence, you can basically create an expression and assign the successful result to a new variable. So let's have a look at this in action. We can see that we're passing in a person type here. We're then doing a match on our person. So if the type matches, if successful, we've then got our new variable that we can then use within our if statement. Now, this is exactly the same as this expression here, where we've got a new person object. We're then matching the object based on the type and assigning it to a new expression. Simple. Discard pattern released within C Sharp 7. A discard variable is a variable that you can assign to. However, they cannot be read from. So the discard pattern will allow you to define an expression where you can say you don't really care about the pattern it matches on or you can match on null. 
Now the most common case for the discard pattern is replacing the default case in a switch statement. On the screen we've got two examples and the first one will show how a discard variable can be used. So in here we can see that we've got a discard variable. This means that we don't care about the result of this expression. Then in the expression we're saying if this is null then throw this exception. Now I'm not going to cover the discard variable in too much detail in this video. If you want to learn more about it I've created a 15 minute video where you can learn everything you need to and if you want to get access to that video you can find it in the related tutorial below. You can see the discard pattern in action on the next line. As you'll see we have a switch statement. This is using the constant pattern because we've got a zero here and then we're matching on the default case or null or empty whatever you want to say using the discard variable here we've now got an expression which is matching on a discard property pattern released with c sharp 8. the property pattern is an easy one to get your head around basically you can do pattern matching on properties within your objects so we've got two examples on screen a switch and an is so in our switch statement you can see that we're being passed in this class of type person in order to ensure that you understand this code example it's probably worth drilling into the person class declaration so we have it on screen unsurprisingly we have a class and it is called person now the person class has three public properties but for this example we only care about the first two so we have a string which is called name that has a get set then we also have an int which is a public property called age which also has a get set going back to our code example you can see that we're being passed in this object called example which is of type person then within our switch statement we're matching on the object and then underneath it you can see that we're doing the property pattern matching so in this example we're saying that if the property of the example object has a name which is equal to ren we're going to render out ren and if the name equals stimpy you guessed it as i mentioned at the beginning you can also apply this logic to the is operator and we've got that underneath so in this example we're passing in that same object of type person we're making an expression and we're checking that it's of type person using the curly braces we're then using the property pattern then within here we're doing a match on the name property and the age property and the logic we're doing in this expression is saying that is name equal to ren and is age equal to 12. now if we have a successful match then we're going to use the declaration property to get the successful match and put it into a new variable and then this variable is obviously called 12 year ren which we can then use within the if statement so simple extended property pattern released with c sharp 10. the extended property pattern does what it says on the tin and it was released to address a limitation with the existing property pattern now this limitation is all around objects inside of objects and how we do pattern matching on them so we've got two examples one which is the old way and we've got the improved new way so let's quickly look at the person class again now on that person class we had three properties and the third public property is the one that we're really interested in this example so as you can see we've got a public we've got a class declaration that i've created myself now in this example the property is called location and it's got a get set now looking at this location type that i've created in here nothing special it's just got a public name instance now going back to our class what we'll see is that if we wanted to do pattern matching on objects within objects in the original property pattern we'd have to write some syntax like this so we'd have to declare the original top level property then we'd use the curly braces again then we'd have the property that we want to target within that object and off we go to the races now the new improved way of doing this allows you to use dot notation in order to access properties within your objects of objects Having a look at this, you can see that we can now just do location.name rather than this curly brace nonsense at the top here. And I think we can all agree that this bottom syntax is a lot cleaner compared to the original way of doing it. So when you're wanting to use objects within objects, you probably won't notice a thing. Just use dot and you can then access things how you'd expect. Tuple pattern released with C-sharp 8. The tuple pattern is another easy one to get up and running with. And the reason for that is it just allows you to do pattern matching on more than one field. So let's have a look at the code example on screen. So we have our person class still. This time we've got a switch statement. And as an input, we're passing in the name and the age property. Now within our expression, you can see we're now doing a pattern match on two things rather than one and we're using that comma separated list in order to do the tuple pattern so in our examples if your ren and your age is 10 
we're going to get this message. And if this object contains the value name of Stimpy and 20, we're going to say, hi, 20 year old Stimpy. Tuple pattern really is as simple as that. Bar pattern released with C sharp eight. The var pattern is all about generating a temporary variable in a Boolean based expression. So let's see this in action. So I've got a lambda here where I've got a string array just of all these numbers and I'm doing a where list. Then within my list, I'm doing a count. And then what I'm doing with my is, is assigning the count to a temporary variable called count. And then I'm using that count variable to say that if the count is less than one. Now we can do it exactly the same within a switch statement. So within our switch statement, I'm passing in my text here. And then what I'm saying is create this temporary var example using the when statement. I'm then saying when my string array contains the value text, then I'm going to put the value in here so then I can use it within this case here. So if you need to generate temporary variables when you're creating Boolean expressions, this is what the var pattern is all about. Positional pattern released with C sharp eight. I found the positional pattern probably one of the harder ones to wrap my head around. And this is because it uses deconstruction. So let's have a look at the two examples on the screen. So first we need to think about deconstruction. Now in order to allow an object to work with deconstruction, we need to add a constructor and a deconstruct method. So looking in our person class right here, you can see that if we go to the bottom, we've got a constructor. And in our constructor, we're passing in name and age, and then we're mapping it to the public properties. And then this is key. We also have this deconstruct method. Now in deconstruct, we've got an out. And again, we've got the name and age being passed in. And this time we're doing the assignments, again, mapping the incoming parameter to the public parameter. Now going back to our example, once we have our deconstruction set up, we can write code like this, which is really nice, a bit more JavaScripty, so I like it. Now, in order to use the positional pattern, we can then use deconstructing in our is statements. So in this example, we're passing in our person object, then we can say is, and then on this deconstructor, we can say that if it's pattern matching on ren and 12, we can then create this new variable over here, and then we can use it. Now, this is exactly the same when we're in a switch statement. So in our switch statement, again, we're passing in this object. Then we can use some deconstruction. Off we go to the races. We can do a match on Ren 0, Stimpy 0. Now, granted, the positional pattern does take a little bit more code to set up. However, it will make your switch statements and your is statements a little cleaner. So you need to kind of balance that trade off for a little bit of extra complexity for cleaner code. Relational pattern released with C sharp nine. We all know and love the six types of relational operators, things like less than, greater than, all that good stuff. So the relational pattern, you can probably guess what it is, is basically allowing you to use those relational operators within your expressions. So we've got two examples here. Now the first one at the top is using is. So we're saying if the age is greater than, so the relational operator greater than 10, return this message. And we can do exactly the same in a switch statement. So here we're saying if this is greater than five, less than five, less than and equal to five, boom. Relational operators, done. Type pattern released with C sharp nine. The type pattern is another simple one. It will allow you to do pattern matching on user defined types. So we've got two examples here. On the first one, you can see that we've got an object being passed in, which is called example. And then in our ears, we're saying, is this object of example a match on this type? And this is the key to type is when we're doing object to a certain type. And we can also do exactly the same in a switch statement. We can see here that we're newing up a new person. We're setting it as an object. And then within our case, we're making a match on the person type. We've got our object and then we render it. Simple as that. Logical pattern released with C sharp nine. The logical pattern is very similar in ilk to the relational pattern. And that is because in this pattern, we can use our beloved and or and not statements. So on the screen, we've got two examples so you can get the gist of it. The first example is chaining three different patterns together. So straight off the bat, hopefully you'll notice that we're using the property pattern here. So what we're doing is on the person type, we want to do a check or an expression within its age property. Now, what we want to say in this expression is that we want to filter on people aged between 12 and 20 years old. 
And in order to do this, we're going to do the relational pattern using the greater than or equals or the less than and equals. And in order to combine these two statements together, we can then use our logical AND. Now, the second example is very similar, except for this time, we're doing age 10 or 20. And to be honest, that's pretty much everything there is to this pattern. Next, list pattern released with C sharp 11. This is the last type of pattern we're going to look at, and this is the list pattern. So in this pattern, we can do expressions and matches based on lists, innumerables, all that good stuff. So on the example on screen, we can see that we've got this interway, and then we're passing in my number, which is an interway. And then in order to do pattern matching using a list pattern, we use the array notation. So the normal brackets here, and then on here, we're saying that if we've got a match of one, two, three, it's going to have a match. We can also use discard variable here. So we're saying if it starts with one and ends with three, we've got a match. And then we can also do all the good logical and relational stuff in here. So we can say, is it zero? Is it one? Is it less than two? Is it greater than three? Boom. So you can see that as soon as we start chaining all these different patterns together, we can actually have these really nice, robust patterns. We have made it to the end. Yes, that was over 12 patterns, covered it in under 15 minutes. And I'm hoping I've helped debunk the difficulty. And as you can see, there's nothing really too scary or to worry about when it comes to these types of pattern matching expressions. So what do you think? Are you using pattern matching? Are you using pattern matching without realizing it? Have you learned something from this video? Please let me know in a comment below. Now, this is that point in the video. If you haven't already, do not forget to click on the subscribe button and help me out. If you have found value by clicking on like, it really does help me grow this channel. Now, if you are interested in learning more about C Sharp, then I've created a video all about the discard variable. So you can learn all about discard, where you can use it, where it's beneficial, and the link to that video should be on the screen right now. So simply click to it wherever it's on the screen. Otherwise, I hope you're having a great day wherever you are, and until next Sunday, happy coding.